to you, tabletop enthusiast. I'm Celine, brand and community manager for Game on Tabletop, the crowdfunding platform for gamers by gamers. I am back with a new video for our series where we interview different actors from the board game and the crowdfunding industry. Today, our special guest is Ori Kigan, who is an animator for board games. Hi, Ori, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. So, first, can you tell us a bit about yourself as a filmmaker and how you became an animator for board games? I've been making movies ever since I was 10. You know, I used to make Star Wars fan films and all. This is actually a prop I used when I was 10. And, you know, eventually I figured out that this is something I could do for a living. And I actually started out as an editor, not as an animator. But I was always fascinated with special effects and animation and stuff like that. After I finished uh, university at Tel Aviv University, I got into the board gaming hobby. I always used to play board games, but I really got into the real games, let's say, beyond the Monopoly and, and Risk and all that. And, you know, this whole world opened up to me and I figured out what Kickstarter was. My wallet figured out what Kickstarter was as well. And I just saw these videos there and some of them were really poor quality and I was like, I can do something so much cooler. That's how I thought of merging these two passions together. And it started out very small, just one project a month or every few months, I managed to find people that are looking for videos and slowly I build up a portfolio. It just sort of blew up from there and it only, I didn't, I never had to do any marketing. It just went word of mouth and I put up a business and eventually I was a freelance uh, animator. Then I stopped freelancing for projects in Israel and I just committed myself to board games. And I'm, I happily say that this is the only thing I'm doing now. This is my whole business and it's like living the dream. Yeah, that's really cool that you're able to do something that you're passionate about. Can you tell me a bit about what you use for your work to make the animations? So I started out using uh, After Effects, mainly for 2D videos, and then I decided I wanted to get into 3D. So I started learning Blender, which is a free uh, software anyone can download. And, you know, my mind just exploded with the possibilities I can go from there. And then, you know, you have miniature games and you have games with all sort of 3D elements and I went beyond that and created whole environments. It's just, it's literally something anyone could jump into and it was perfect for me. I wanted to ask you when you start a new project, how does it work? Do the publisher or the client give you a script or maybe a storyboard or do you make it all yourself? What are the steps? So the cool thing about board game videos is board games usually have a really cool theme and, and story already set in. You know, it could be sci-fi, it could be uh, fantasy, it could be uh, abstract, but uh, with some sort of theme to it. So I always, ha always have a starting point. I usually like uh, the creators to just tell me what excites them the most about their board game. We never get into rules, too much rules. It's not a how to play video. You want to get people excited. You want to get people passionate. You want to show your passion about your game. So. I try to draw that out of my clients, okay? Usually through a t uh, I talk with them about the game, I play it, uh, you know, we have tabletop simulator so we can actually play the game. And they put like either a brief or I just uh, write everything myself. And from there, we put together a script. We have a storyboard. And again, storyboards for these videos are very simple because all the assets exist. I always tell the creators, you don't have to create anything, especially for the video. Everything is there. And I would dig into their files, into their amazing art assets, which they, you know, poured money to create and, and uh, a lot of creativity. And I would try to build the video. If it's a 2D video or a 3D video, I'll try to build everything from what I have. And uh, yeah, that's, it's a really fun experience. Okay, see, so most of the time you reuse the elements that they give you, um, but as well you can also create new illustrations or new animations that needs to be included in the videos. So that obviously depends on budget. Uh, using existing assets is much easier. Uh, but yeah, we do create some assets, especially for a video. I'm actually working on one right now. I can't really talk about it, but we're, we're not only creating the assets for the game, it's a game that doesn't have assets at all okay it's a very abstract game and we're creating the whole world for the game to live and breathe in so that's a very exciting experience and this is right now what i'm working on 
But most of the time, it's board games which come to me at the end of their process. Everything is ready. The game is, is, is there's prototypes. All the art is finished. That's the stage they want to start working on a video about, you know, four months before the Kickstarter. So I take everything that exists and I, I work with it. Okay, so you actually talked uh, previously about the projects that you liked. Uh, which one do you particularly loved working on? Well, there are two projects which were really unique. I always love projects which, you know, throw something out of left field that the client wants something completely different. And two projects like that were, one was for uh, Robot Quest Arena that I did for Wise Wizard Games. Yeah. Let's go. find a way to present it in an exciting way. And we thought, why don't we do a rap song? It's all up to you in Robot Quest Arena. It's a battle to the top and a battle for somebody by drop. The opponent laying down on the ground. That will go with it. So I found a rapper. I found a sound designer and composer. And we basically created a soundtrack for this video using rap and, and, and fast lyrics and, and cool uh, uh, jazzy beats. And it was mind blowing. It was such a fun experience. I've never, you know, done composing or sound design before as a director. So that was a very interesting experience. And people, I think people loved it. You know, people asked for it to be on Spotify afterwards. The other one was for actually not a board game or an RPG called Everway. Stories, legends, myths. Our shared humanity is rooted in tales of heroes and epic deeds. Every culture has its own myths, its own symbols, its own inner truth. From a timeless past, those myths call on us to add to our own tales. And that was also an interesting experience because we didn't have any game components. We didn't need to model a game, no 3D, no 2D, um, no cards. Oh, it does have cards. Um, it's just a book and a few tarot cards. So what could we do there? And it had all these amazing illustrations. It had this epic setting. So I was like, okay, so let's animate some of those illustrations, which are, you know, classic. So they're flat. I didn't have any layers to work with. And then I created this cosmic 3D setting out in space. There was like a, a planet with a, a, a stand that you go up it and there is the book. And it has all this nice textures, leather textures, and it opens up and there's light shining out of the cosmos. So the video ends by zooming out of there and you see everything is connected with all these universes together. And it was like completely abstract, completely wild. Um, and yeah, it was, I really felt my creative juices flowing for that video. What tips can you give to help create a story um, in animation? Every video should be looked at as a movie, as a story like any story that we know. Even if it's a promotional video, even if it's a, a, a product video, you always want to have those classic story beats. The premise, the conflict, the climax, and the resolution. You are, and I mentioned this before, you are bringing the viewers onto an emotional experience. Okay, you're not explaining to them. You want to hit the, the, the right side of the brain and not the left side of the brain, the emotional side. So we always resonated with stories. That's why we like movies. That's why we like TV shows. That's why we like books. So if you can manage to narrow that in for a one to two minute experience and have that premise, you know, in a world where da 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 happens and then conflict, what you as a gamer are going to have conflict. Most games have conflict in them. Otherwise, they're not fun and then you need to overcome that conflict and then you have a choice to either leave it at a cliffhanger what will you do or to sort of solve it and show the joy of winning the game and and you know achieving your victory and then you say i want to do that and then you need to hit them with a call to action back now <laughs> but that's how i build almost all of my videos i saw on your youtube channel that you actually have a tutorial series for creators uh, so they can learn to make their own own animations if they want to. Um, if you follow them all, would you be able to fully animate your own videos? Yeah, I created these uh, tutorials. Like I mentioned before, Blender is very easy to use. It's very intuitive. You can jump right in by watching a few tutorials. And I felt like I wanted to give back to the gaming community because, you know, from the gaming community, these are the best clients I've ever had. 
they're so fun to work with you know i could relate to them because i'm a gamer myself so i could like imagine them as people i would love to play with so i wanted to give something back and i put together a, a tutorial series that is specifically focused on creating a 3d game layout okay so it's not not about animation yet so far we've covered the basics of, of creating the game board box and cards and having them you know cards are never straight they need to be a little bit scattered so i go into that creating interesting textures you know the sides of tokens have these little strips in them these all these tiny tiny details which you don't initially think about but when you see a render it sort of registers like you expect it to so it's very simple tricks literally anyone kid with a computer can go look at those tutorials and have a very basic uh, game layout it's still a work in progress i'm going to be uh, making more down the line and hopefully i'll have a whole uh, series where you go from the beginning from the basics of blender to having a full 3d layout of your game and then creators could do it themselves that's cool we actually have creators who would need this kind of services or would like to do them themselves because they don't necessarily have the budget um so these are great resources the thing about it you can make it even before you have a prototype once you get your art assets, you want to see the game, how it looks like, how it's going to feel like, so you can start putting it together in Blender. Uh, there's so many opportunities with the software. Okay, and is there anything specific you need to think about when it comes to doing animation for um, crowdfunding campaigns in particular? So for crowdfunding videos, the important thing is to build trust. Okay, we all know that crowdfunding is notoriously not a, not a store, okay? It's not a guarantee. Uh, the game is still needs to go into production. So you want to build a trust uh, for a backer to fully invest in you and put his heart on cash to eventually get the product. And the way you should do that is there's two ways. One is if you have the budget, then go to the extent to create a video with high production values. And I'm talking about the full 3D. If you have miniatures, then yeah, definitely you should think about it. Having all of this 3D graphics and 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 environments and lighting and you know you need to wow uh, the backers, the potential backers, so they see wow he put so much effort just for the video. Imagine how the game will be. Okay, so they're excited for the game. They're they're wowed by the visuals. They're intrigued by the the pitch, the game itself they're ready to go to the next step and read on, okay? The video is just the first step for having a backer gain trust in the in the, in the creator and to read more and eventually uh, back your game and become part of a community, which is also a major part of crowdfunding. Um, the other way is I, I, I know that a lot of indie developers don't have the budget for these high-end videos, and it doesn't mean that you have to have those, okay? I really want to stress this. You can create a very good, heartwarming and heartfelt, uh, low budget video. It's important to show you as a creator or the creator of the game and have them talk about the game and show your excitement, show what, what like, it's just the same thing. Show the story of the game, how it plays just a little bit, just to get the, get, get a taste of how exciting it is and why you put all this time and effort in creating it. And if you're genuine and people feel that when you're genuine, then you build trust again. And it's just the same process. So it's possible. Don't fake high production values. That's the only thing I can say. Don't try to show as if you have a high quality video, but it isn't a high quality video because people see through that. And then they would suspect the game itself for doing the same thing. What you said actually remind me of what Tim Sean from our previous interview with a board game photographer said um, as well about crowdfunding campaigns. He said that when he's like looking at a crowdfunding campaign, he looks at the photos first because if in the photo, like if the photos are not in very good quality, or if there's something in the back of the photo that is not supposed to be there, then maybe something might not work correctly in the game either. Exactly. Right. It's really, it's like... In movies, they say that the weather reflects the inside of the person is the emotional uh, uh, place the, per the, the character is in. So it's, it's the same thing with, with everything that has to do with marketing. Okay, you feel the weather, you feel is it hot, is it cold, is it raining? And then you can reflect what, what's inside the box, you know, what's inside the game, what's going on there. About sound and music. 
which is important in videos. Uh, we know that a lot of people actually watch videos without sound because they are maybe in a public space or they can't put the sound very loud. So what can you recommend creators to do to attract, still attract the attention of the viewer um, without the sound? So sound. Okay, first of all, I'm going to stress that I'm really glad for this question. Sound is 50% of the video. If you can, okay, turn on the sound. <laughs> I implore you. There's so much effort in, in, in TV and in movies and also in, in internet videos. So much effort put in sound and sound design. It should definitely be part of your experience. Unfortunately, yes, we can't always turn on the sound. Sometimes we're with the kids. Sometimes we're in a place where you don't have headphones or anything. Um, so I would first of all say that subtitles is a must. And I really do my best to have subtitles on every single one of my videos. Uh, not only for people that don't watch without sound, but also for hearing impaired uh, uh, community. So that's, you know, without question, it doesn't take a long time and just do it. And the second thing is have a very strong first five seconds. Okay. Because the moment something is completely grabbing the attention of the viewer, he's going to want to turn on the sound to see what he's missing. So, and obviously it makes sure that he continues watching until the end. In terms of budget, we've talked a bit about it before. Um, is animation actually expensive and what does the budget for animation depend on? Is there maybe certain types of animations that are more or less expensive? I can only speak for myself. Um, every video I quote separately based on its needs, its complexity, the complexity and the type of animation style which they want to go with. Um, but board game, uh, specifically board game uh, videos, since they have all the assets already created. So for me, at least they range between the two and three K uh, USD. Okay. Obviously there are exceptions. There are cheaper ones and there are more expensive ones, all depending on, on the complexity of the video and the animation style. 2D animation is cheaper. And 3D is really something that is very time consuming. It has an extra layer of just modeling the game and modeling the pieces and and creating the environment, which with 2D you can sort of just jump right in and start animating. So 3D is obviously on more the expensive side of things. That being said, we always find a solution for every client. So we've already talked a bit about it previously, but do you do everything yourself? Or are you hiring extra people for different things, like for example, uh, voiceovers or sound effects? No, I don't do everything myself. I do a lot, <laughs> a lot I do myself, but not everything. I think, you know, the board game world is all about collaboration. And that's also the way to success with any good video. Voiceover, I hire, I have a, a few voiceover actors, which I hire to do the voiceover. I have script writers for some of the more complex scripts that we need to put together. And when there is something specific which I need help with, then I do have some animators which I, I work with. And very recently I did a video where we wanted to have hands animated as if they're playing the game while we see the game uh, uh, around us for a game called Old Salt. Hi there lads, step up. Hear a tale of true swashbuckling seafaring warfare. I was there, an admiral, leading me own fleet of ships with orders to finally put an end to the war of the seas. And for sound design, then I do have a professional sound designer, which will really elevate the video uh, with the sound effects and the music and the mixing and the mastering. There's so many levels there which I'm completely out of my element with. I know how to do basic sound design, but if a client really wants to bring it to the next level, cinematic quality, then I have people that do that as well. What are the things an animator should never do or avoid if they are any? So for animators, I can only speak for myself, obviously, but I never try to limit myself. Whenever a client comes to me with this crazy idea and I have no idea how to do it, I first of all say, no, not a problem, okay? <laughs> say not a problem, then I try to figure it out. And you know, that's what got me to Blender, okay? A client wanted a 3D video. I was like, I have no idea how to do that, but I'll figure it out. If it doesn't work, stop, 
and find another way to do it. Okay, don't hit yourself against the wall, especially with deadlines. You would always find a smarter, quicker, and easier way to do something. I tried to do a video with uh, liquid animations. It proved to be very time consuming, so I just found stock elements to use instead, and it looked just as good. If possible, and we talked about this, don't try doing everything yourself. Okay, if you have too much on your plate, you can always find someone else to help you with it. And last thing, and I cannot stress this enough, always under promise and over deliver. Okay, don't over promise. Don't say, yeah, I'll be ready tomorrow. Always give yourself some, some of that breathing, breathing room and surprise your clients. Okay, before we sign off, is there anything else that you would like to talk about? And this is something I tell all my clients in, the, in my initial talks with them. A video isn't everything. If you put thousands of dollars into your video and it looks amazing, it won't assure that the game will be funded. There's so much of marketing that you need to do around the video and around the game to be able to, uh, to have a successful funding. So make sure that you know basic marketing, that you do enough pre-launch, that you do social media stuff. There's so much info out there. You just need to go search and read it, but don't count on the video to do the heavy lifting. Okay. The opposite, the opposite is true. The heavy lifting is the marketing that you do before launching and the video is just the cream on top. You know, once people are hyped about your game, you have a community and then you show off this amazing video, that's it. You know, if they were on the fence before, then they won't be now. Okay, so the video is pretty much the last step, right? Yeah, yeah. So marketing is important. That's basically what I want to say. And I actually, I'm, you know, since I started working in this industry, and unfortunately, I had a few videos, which I put a lot of effort to and the campaigns didn't fund. And I realized I want to help these people. I want to find a way for my videos to be on successful campaigns. So I started studying marketing myself and I've been working on this initiative to uh, help creators get their uh, marketing right. And I collaborate with uh, uh, a game designer, Joe Slack, and a marketing social media expert, uh, Dina Ramsey. And we basically built a team which would help creators get their steps correctly for launching. It's, I feel like it's an inherent part of what I do. And it's definitely something that people should be aware of. And when I get a client and I feel that they're not quite on the right path, you know, they know they need a video, so they come to me. But I see that, I one, I haven't heard about their game before. And I usually hear about all of the games that are coming up. So, and that they're not quite sure of what they need to do. Like they say, oh, we need the video in two weeks. I'm like, what about, you know, your campaign, your marketing, your following? Do you have a Facebook group? So I would offer this option for them to hopefully set them on the right path. Yeah, that's interesting. We actually have a lot of creators who also sometimes need help with marketing their campaigns. So they can also contact you about this need in addition to your animation services. And finally, can you tell the people that are watching us uh, where they can find you? If anyone is uh, interested in seeing my work, so you can either visit my website, kaganproductions.com. I'm also on Instagram, Kagan Productions, and Facebook, Kagan Productions. And yeah, hit me up with any of those places if you're interested in my work and you want to talk about your project. Well, thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, you know, I, I love doing what I'm doing and I hope I will do, we'll be doing that for a long time. And that's it for today's interview with Ori Kigan, a animator for board games. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, to comment and to subscribe to our channel to follow all our crafting adventures. Check out GameOnTabletop.com to support the crafting industry and the board game industry and discover great tabletop campaigns. See you next time. Bye bye.